Hello. Today we shall be developing Garch two zero Garch two zero model, meaning that there are two arch term but there are two arch term but no garch term so that is why here you can see there are two arch and zero garch so that is our model today okay so okay first we have many mean model and here you can see uh, this one is our mean model ibr c1 is the constant c2 is the coefficient isr and e so 1.1 uh, actually is the mean model and here ibr means indian born return c means constant and isr means indian stock return and e means residual and here we have taken daily data of return of 200 days okay so so actually the the first one 1.1 is our mean model the second question is when we should run arch and guards model so that is the second question and the answer is there should have two precondition before estimating arch and garch model and they are number one condition clustering volatility in the residual and the second precondition arch effect should be there in the residual okay now question is that what is clustering volatility it means that when the periods of high volatility are followed by periods of high volatility and periods of low volatility tend to be followed by periods of low volatility for prolonged period this beha behavior is known as clustering volatility this suggests that residual or error term is conditionally heteroscedastic and it can be represented by arch and garch model okay and the second precondition is arch effect what is the null hypothesis there is no arch effect and alternative hypothesis would be there is arch effect and and if i can reject the null hypothesis and accept alternative hypothesis in that case I can run arch and garch model and what what uh, 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 what uh, uh, I shall do here actually uh, I shall test clustering volatility and arch effect arch effect uh, arch effect in our mean model right 
and 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 if there is clustering volatility here and if there is a arch effect here then we have the validity to run the arch and garch model and that we shall be doing first right okay and there is one more model variance model because the actually the garch model actually ha has two aspect one is mean model and one is variance model and this one is the mean model and this one is the variance model okay here the model is like this ht c3 c4 e square t minus 1 c5 is the coefficient e square t minus 2 then c6 coefficient of bbr and pbr okay okay here in this model okay the question is that how to derive this 1.2 model okay residual derived from mean model 1.1 is used in making variance model that is 1.2 meaning that what I have done first I uh, first I have estimated this mean model and I have taken the residual from this model and after taking residual I have estimated this variance model so that is the guideline and here the question is that what is hasty actually hasty is the dependent variable and hasty means variance of the residual derived from equation 1.1 and it is also known as current days current days variance or volatility of Indian bond return not I it should be IBR Indian bond return that means uh, this uh, dependent variable HT meaning that that volatility of the Indian bond return and that is called IBR and IBR actually our target variable and that is our dependent variable and also our target variable and c3 is the constant you can see c3 that is the constant and what is uh, e square t minus 1 and e square t minus 2 okay here what is happening actually we are developing garch 20 model meaning that garch 20 model means actually there is two arch term and no garch term so actually uh, this is uh, uh, this is arch 1 and this one is arch 2 right this is arch 1 and this is arch 2 and and in this model there is no garch term right okay so there are two arch 
this is the first one and this is the second one okay now question is that what does mean by e square t minus 1 or e square t minus 2 actually the the the, the, the meaning of it previous period squared residual derived from equation 1.1 and it is also known as previous days born return information about the volatility in IBR and it is called arch term. And what is PBR? Pakistan bond return and it is an exogenous or predetermined variable. What is BBR? Bangladesh bond return and this one is also exogenous and predetermined variable meaning that BBR and PBR are the are the exogenous variable right or predetermined variable and we shall be also estimating this model 1.2 and actually this model is our target model and here the dependent variable is HT and that is volatility of Indian bond return that is IBR right and IBR actually is our target variable and here PBR and BBR are also known variance regressor as they can also contribute in the volatility of IBR in equation 1.2 and, uh, and this model is a Garch 2.0 model as it has two arch term and zero Garch term. And here we shall estimate mean model 1.1 and various variance model 1.2 simultaneously. And here the arch arch is the is the internal shock arch is the in internal shock or influence that is that is influencing IBR and BBR and PBR are the international shock on IBR so that that is our model so there are two things one is internal shock internal shock on IBR and external shock on IBR also meaning that you can see from here this model in this model from here to here actually uh, family shock or shock from inside the country shock from inside the country and these two actually shock from outside the country right outside India outside India right outside shock international shock and finally objective of the study this study aims to model the volatility of the IBR and factors affecting the volatility of 
IBR. So that is the objective of the study. Okay, now now uh, now we can see all the data that uh, that I have. 200 days data. You can see the data is here. We have four variables. So these are the days. All the days are there. BBR, PBR, IBR, and ISR, right? So this is my data for 200 day, days return data. Return, return data, return. 200 days, right? You can see from here, 200 days data, right? Okay, so first I estimate the mean model. 1.1 and check whether there is a clustering volatility or not or there is a arch effect or not that we check first okay go to statistics to check it i go to statistics then i go to time series because this model is a time series model right so I select time series and set up and declare data set to be time series data. I select it first at the very beginning and I select the OBS that that is my data that is my time series right then I press OK. So the time variable from 1 to 200 days are there okay now first first i estimate the mean model 1.1 so i select statistics linear model linear model right i select it and our dependent variable is ibr and independent variable is ISR actually the this one actually our mean model right IBR and ISR and, and, and the model is 1.1 that I said right now then it is set I press ok yeah the model has been es es estimated you can see here the IBR is the dependent variable and ISR is the independent variable and 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 this is our mean model okay now I check whether this model has clustering volatility or not and also we check whether this model has arch effect or not okay so first i check the first i find out the residual of this model okay i create the residual first okay how to create i go to statistics then i go to uh, i go to post uh, estimation you can see from here then prediction and residuals that I select okay then I choose this one residuals and the name of the residual I put as a R1 right that is the name of the residual is R1 okay I do it first I create it first right okay I press okay you see the the, the the predict r1 the residual has been created okay now I check whether this re re residual uh, has clustering volatility or not and we also check whether there is a arch effect or not okay so f so the first I check whether there is a clustering volatility or not 
okay then so uh, so we have to plot the data plot this r1 and then only we can check whether there is a clustering volatility or not so we plot it how to plot i go to statistics then go to time series then i go to graph then i go to line plot okay then here i create okay time series plot right and our variable is r1 that is the residual right that is the residual and accept okay okay so it, it, the plotting is coming gradually just wait it has come up you can see the plotting from here you see so this is the re residual right and plotting of residual for 200 days you can see from here this is day one until day 200 right and here you can see day one until day 40 right that means 40 days low volatility is followed by low volatility for a prolonged period at least 40 days right again from 40 days until 100 days high volatility is followed by high volatility right for a prolonged period almost uh, 60 days right and again from 100 days un until 150 days low volatility is followed by another low volatility for a prolonged period Again, from 150, 150 days until 200 days, high volatility is followed by another high volatility. And, and, and when the behavior is like this, meaning that there is a clustering volatility. So, in that case, we can run the arch and garch model because there is a clustering volatility in the residual. Okay, that is that is precondition number one. Okay, then we check the precondition number two. That means whether there is a arch effect or not so that we can check now okay go to st statistics right then i go to time series then i go to test then time series specification after regress i select this one and after selecting this one you can see here arch test for arch right you can see here and you, you select the number of lag I put here suppose one one lag press ok so this is my result right arch result chi square value this is the probability value and what is the null hypothesis there is no arch effect in the residual right and and the probability is 0 0.29 percent probability is 0 0.29 percent right here the probability actually stands up 0 0.29 percent which is less than 5 percent meaning that we can reject the null hypothesis 
and can accept the alternative hypothesis meaning that there is a arch effect in the residual right so 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 meaning that two two precondition has been fulfilled number one there is a clustering volatility and number two there is a arch effect in the in the mean model so we have all the validity to run the gauge model now and that we shall do now how to proceed i go to statistics as before time series arch and gauge and arch and gauge models i select here and here our dependent variable is always i bear <laughs> that is our target variable and independent variable is isr right and this one actually our mean model right okay and and and, we, and, and our target actually to make garch to zero model right to Two, two arch term and zero garch term that is our target right okay so here I write here two right I write here two and garch is no garch right so uh, I keep it blank I keep it blank because there is no garch term so I only select two arch term and then I, s I click on the model 3 right here model 3 and and, and we have uh, two more variable then that is called conditional variance model variables and those are one is BBR and second one is PBR and these two are actually uh, uh, international volatility right one is BBR and one is PBR okay okay now our model is set and and also one more thing there is a distribution right so there are three one is Gaussian one is student and one is G E D right there are three uh, 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 distribution so first I start with Gaussian the distribution then then gradually I shall do student and then G E D okay so I proceed okay yes the result is coming up gradually I click ok more more I think the result uh, I, I, I do not know whether we, we, we can get the result or not using Gaussian not sure but still you can try she is trying to get result under Gaussian normal condition but it seems that She is failing greatly.
result is coming up concave not concave i think we we can drop this uh, drop this uh, this gaussian distribution so she can't get it i guess okay so uh, i think she will not be able to come okay okay then what we do we better uh, we better do something else okay we better try with we have we have we have so many options right okay so uh, we set everything nicely then model 3 okay we, we can select the second option because the first option uh, we, we have not got result student t and we select here we take 10 degree of freedom right we select 10 and we run the model and i see what happens here i hope get results this time mm, was creating problems okay still i checked Still, we have to wait for it. Okay, what I do because the, the first one we have not got any outcome, so I select the second one, student T. And I take the 10 de degree of freedom. I hope this one we shall get result. So I click OK. OK, yes, the result has come up. Luckily, the second one I have got result. Student 1, right? This is the Arch family, right? And I bear actually the, our tar target variable. And here actually the first part actually the mean model this part is the mean model and the second part this part actually our variance model that is 1.2 and this part is 1.1 right okay but 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 here actually our target is the variance part variance model right and here the dependent variable actually HET meaning that volatility volatility of Indian bond return right so that is our target variable volatility of IBR right that is the dependent variable volatility of uh, IBR that is here right variance uh, variance model variance dependent variable right okay now I check which variable and these are all in independent variable right and you can see BBR PBR and con constant and here we have two arch term right two arch term okay so first i check and here you can see this is the coefficient you can see from here coefficient standard error z statistics and probability value all are here so here you can see okay first i check one by one whether bbr is a significant variable to explain volatility of IBR so that is the first question and here you can see the probability value it is the probability value is very small less than 5% meaning that BBR is a significant variable to explain the volatility of IBR 
Okay, then what about PBR? Is it significant variable? The probability is 46.7%, which is more than 5%, meaning that PBR uh, is not a significant variable to explain the volatility of IBR. Okay, here the BBR, the sign is negative, meaning that when BBR goes up, right, that means there is a negative association shift between BBR and volatility of IBR, negative relationship and BBR is a significant variable, right? And, and what is BBR here? BBR is the external shock, external influence, external influence on IBR, right? Or, or I can say international influence international international influence on ibr okay now i check about our arch arch you can see there are two arch term one is l1 and one is l2 okay first i check the arch 1 is it significant the probability is 4.5 percent, right? Meaning that arch 1 is significant to explain the volatility of IBR, right? That means, uh, that means, that means previous Days bond information, right? Previous days bond uh, uh, information, Pre uh, previous days IBR bond information, bond information can influence. influence can influence can influence oh sorry 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 I've done mistakes where I've gone I've done mistakes just on a minute okay okay here here you can see LR is significant right meaning that and our dependent variable is always volatility of IBR, right? That is the dependent variable. And, and L1 is significant, meaning that previous days IBR born information can influence can influence today's today's or current days volatility of IBR. So it means that previous days IBR bond information can influence today's or current days volatility of IBR and so so this one actually is what this one actually I can call it as internal shock internal influence right internal influence coming from the country, in, internal influence 
that is affecting IBR, not international influence, internal influence that is affecting volatility of IBR. Okay. But arch 2 is not significant because p value is 35.2 percent okay okay now i check uh, uh, i check one more thing how is this model right how is this model okay how is this model as a whole that means i want to do diagnostic checking whether this the whether the residual is 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 uh, serially correlated or not whether the residual is normally distributed or not that i want to check right now okay how to check but first i have to create the residual of our garch model right only then we can check the residual, whether the residual is desirable or not. So, we create the residual again as before of this Garch model that we have developed right now. How to create it? As before, I go to statistics, then I go to post estimation then prediction and residuals okay I select this one residual and the name of the new residual is r2 right r2 is the name of the residuals when there is student t distribution right student t distribution then the name of the residual is r2 Okay, so I press, okay, yes, the residual has been created. Now, we check whether this, this residual has serial correlation or not. Okay, how to check? We can check a, in a number of ways. Okay, I go to statistics, time series, then I go to graph, I go to First, I check this way, autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation. That is the first way I select this one. And our re residual is R2, right? right? R2. Make sure not R1 because the R1 is the residual of the mean model. Make sure, right? So, take R2. So, that is our residual. So, I press ok. So, actually the this one is the result of correlogram. These are the lag right you can see the lag Q statistics and the corresponding probability more you can say more. So, there are 40 lags uh, so far have been taken. And you can see all the probability are actually zero, very small. You can see all the probability are less than 5 percent. You can see all are less than 5 percent. What is our null hypothesis? Null is there is no serial correlation in the residual, right? What is the alternative? There is there is a serial correlation. That is alternative, right? Okay, here you can see all the probability value is you can see probability value are very small, meaning that less than five percent, right? Less than five percent. So, we, we can reject the null hypothesis 
and can accept the alternative hypothesis, meaning that there is serial correlation in our model and that is not desirable. This model is not good because there is serial correlation or so there is serial correlation so that is not desirable okay so uh, actually uh, we have some more test of serial correlation we can do it now i go to statistics time series and i go to test suppose i select this test portman to white noise test, white noise test, right? Portman to a white noise test and, and this test is also serial correlation test or white noise test, right? I select it and our variable is R2, right? R2, okay, that I select here then press OK and here you can see portmanteau's test for white noise and q statistics corresponding probability so here the probability is how much 0.17% which is less than 5% meaning that we can reject the null hypothesis and can accept alternative hypothesis meaning that there is serial correlation in the residual and that is not desirable right so meaning that the residual is not white noise residual is not white noise because residuals are serially correlated and that is not desirable and in the same way we can do one more test of serial correlation I click on the statistics time series test we can do Barlett's periodogram based white noise test right we can do also th this test click OK the variable I say is R2 that is our variable right and show graph right they will show everything and I click OK it is coming up gradually ok this is the results right you can see this is the Barlett statistics 2.13 and probability is very small you can see the probability is very small meaning that we can reject the null hypothesis and can accept the alternative hypothesis meaning that there is serial correlation in the residual or the residual is not white noise right meaning that residual is not white noise or there is there is serial correlation in the model and that is not desirable okay you can see from here there is a two diagram and you can see when this plotting is is inside the diagram uh, sorry in inside this uh, two range then the residual is white noise or there is no serial correlation and that is desirable but here you can see the plotting has gone outside meaning that the, the residual is not white noise or the residual is serially correlated and that is not desirable. Okay. 
So here we have done the three tests for R2 and all tests are telling that that residual is serially correla correlated or uh, the residual is not white noise. So the model is not good, we cannot accept the model because there is serial correlation. Okay, now we check whether the residual is normally distributed or not, meaning that R2 is normally distributed or not. So, what I do, I go to statistics as before, I go to statistics. There are many way oh, we can check it. Suppose I, I check this one, distributional plots, then I select Shapiro Wilk test of normality that I select, right? This one. Okay, then our variable is R2, right? We select R2, that is our residual and I press OK. okay this is the sh uh, Shapiro test and here the null hypothesis is residual is normally distributed, residual is, is normally distributed and alternative residual is not normal. Okay, and here you can see the statistics and the p-value is very small, meaning that we can reject the null hypothesis and can accept the alternative hypothesis, meaning that residual is not normal and that is not desirable. So, in this model, there are two problems that residual are serially correlated and number two residual is not normal. So, we cannot accept this model. Okay. Then now uh, we check our last di uh, distribution that we have. So, I, I again estimate Arch and Garch model right as before. I can estimate it and uh, I go to uh, and uh, uh, everything is, is set as before then model 3. So, now I select GED right GED and I, s I here I put parameter I take 1.5 here I take 1.5 and other remain unchanged everything remain unchanged. I click here, ok. I hope the result will come up, yes, the result has come up under GED, ok. Ok, as before, the first one actually our mean model and the second one actually our variance model 1.2, ok. Here, the BBR is a significant variable because the probability is less than 5 percent and here our dependent variable is what? Volatility of I bear Indian bond return right that is the target variable. So, here the volatility of B bear can influence the volatility of IBR. So, that is the outcome of this result. And PBR, is it significant? The probability is 81.4 percent, which is more than 5 percent, meaning that probability, meaning that volatility of PBR cannot influence the volatility of IBR, right. 
so that is the outcome and here BBR and PBR actually uh, international shock okay now we talk about arts model that is internal shock here arch 1 and arch 2 okay arch 1 is it significant no 17.6 percent it is not significant what about arch 2 is it significant no because the probability is 79.1 percent which is more than 5 percent so individually individually arch 1 and arch 2 are not significant to influence volatility of IBR. Okay, but 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 this arch one and arch two jointly can be significant to explain volatility of IBR. So what what we can do now? We can do the joint test. Joint test of arch one and arch two, right? whether they are jointly significant or not okay how to check it i go to statistics then i go to post estimation then i go to test then i check test linear hypothesis right that i select okay then then here uh, i have to create create okay then test coefficient you see l arch 1 and l arch 2 right whether these two l uh, that means a lag 1 arch sorry arch 1 and arch 2 that is here right this one and this one jointly 0 or not that we want to check right jointly they are jointly not individually jointly okay i set it press okay and i press okay you can see the chi square value and corresponding probability what is the null hypothesis null is arch one and arch 2 jointly cannot affect volatility volatility of IBR that is the now right okay so here you can see the probability is how much 28.24 percent which is more than 5 percent so we cannot reject null hypothesis rather we accept null hypothesis meaning that arch 1 and arch 2 jointly cannot affect the volatility of IBR that is the decision of this model so meaning that arch 1 and arch 2 individually and jointly cannot affect the volatility of IBR so that is the decision of this model okay now we check uh, how is the model whether uh, that means that means that means we check the uh, we check that <laughs> we check the whether there is serial correlation or not right whether residual is normally distributed or not 
okay but we have to create the residual of this model right we have to create the residual again as before I go to statistics then I go to uh, I go to post estimation and prediction residual so the, 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 the I select this one residual I select this one and new variable name last time I created R1 R2 this time I create R3 that is our new residual right right so this is the new re re residual so I create it yes the residual has been created okay first I check whether serial correlation or not I go to statistics then time series then uh, as before I go to graph and I go to graph then I go to autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation I select it and from here I select R3 make sure this time R3 right R3 not R1 or R2 it is R3 okay I press ok you can see as before the lag is coming up Q and probability as before you can see all the probability value is very small right very small meaning that we can reject the null hypothesis and can accept alternative hypothesis meaning that there is serial correlation in the residual so this model is not good right okay we we check also uh, some more test as before time series then go to test then we check the uh, uh, portman to white noise test and we select r3 we select r3 and okay and here you can see as before the probability is very small meaning that we can reject the null hypothesis and can accept the alternative hypothesis meaning that in the residual there is serial correlation or the residual is not white noise so we cannot accept the model and we can also test one more of white noise as before I go to test and Barlett's test as before right I do this one and here I select R3 as before right then press OK as before and I make it big you can see from here this is the barless statistics and the probability value right it is very small right less than 5% so we can reject the null hypothesis and can accept the alternative hypothesis and 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 what is what is our alternative hypothesis that there is serial correlation in the residual right and and here uh, we have successfully re rejected null hypothesis and accepted alternative hypothesis meaning that there is serial correlation or the residual is not white noise and also you can see from here this is R3 right R3 the, the residual plotting is outside this two line right outside this two line meaning that the residuals are not white noise or the there is serial correlation okay so we have done it and uh, and, and we have done three tests and all tests are telling that the residuals are not white noise 
right? Or there is serial correlation. And finally, we check that whether uh, residual is normally distributed or not. As before, I go to statistics, summary table, I go to uh, 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 distribution, then I go to Shapiro Wilk test of normality, right? Click here. And here I select R3, right? Not R2, R3. Press OK. Okay, here is the Shapiro Wilk test and it is the statistics and probability. So we can reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternative hypothesis, meaning that residual distribution is not normal and that is not desirable. So this model has two problems, that is the residuals are serially correlated meaning that uh, uh, the, the meaning that there is, there is uh, that me, that means the serially correlated means there is no white noise so that is number one bad side and second bad side is residuals are not normally distributed so we cannot accept this model thank you very much for being with me for a while